What's up, guys? I'm Pao, and I'm Gwen, and welcome to another game review. This time, we are going to do a more in-depth review of this adrenaline-pumping, pedal-to-the-metal racing game, CSR2, developed by the British company Natural Motion. Unlike the other videos that we've made, we are going to break it down further this time around into the following categories: core loop, base action, race modes, social engagement, events, and economy. So without further ado, let's rev up those engines, buckle up, and enjoy the ride. The game core loop for CSR2 revolves around four components: competing in crew battles and different race modes, obtaining rewards, upgrading car parts and purchasing new cars, and lastly, racking up and unlocking new crew battles. The game's main objective is to dominate the streets by becoming the strongest drag racer. You can compete in crew battles, which is the main storyline of the game, and other race modes to receive awesome prizes and rewards. These are the types of races that become increasingly difficult as you keep playing them. There are specific game modes which allow you to get more cash or fusion parts, while some allow you to bet and compete with other active players. The time gate for CSR2 is represented by the fuel bar, and you must ensure that you always have enough fuel so that you can compete in races that you want to participate in. You can receive awesome rewards as you complete races. Cash and gold allow you to purchase new cars and upgrade car parts, while respect points increases your rank in the personal and crew leaderboards. Aside from that, you can get bonus cash rewards upon executing certain race conditions during the match. You can also get keys which can be used to open crates that contain rare fusion parts and cars. The prizes and rewards that you have received can be used to upgrade your car parts to improve the overall performance of your car. Each car part has 5 levels and you must keep on purchasing to unlock the succeeding level. For upgrading, you can do some enhancements on the following car parts. Body, tires, transmission, engine, turbo, and intake. In addition, you can also purchase new cars and personally customize them according to your design preferences. As you keep on competing on races, you will continuously earn respect points or RP. These points can help you get awesome prizes and rewards on both personal and crew leaderboards. If you beat the crew leader three times in crew battles, you'll have the opportunity to win the bus car, which you can use to enter into the next crew battle. CSR Racing 2 is of course all about the races. Races in the game are in the form of a dogfight, a fast-paced drag race between you and another car. So, let's start the race, shall we? You see that pedal on the right? A 3-second countdown starts as soon as you tap on that pedal. The goal is to position the needle here on the green area of the speedometer at the count of 1 in order to create a perfect start. This is really important as you would want to take off at your best speed. Taking off within the mark meter warrants a good start, while going off outside makes for a wheel spin or a slow start, both constituting for a disadvantageous start. During the run, you can shift gears by tapping on either side of the screen, right to shift up and left to shift down. The timing for the perfect shift is thought out for you by the game, and all you have to do is tap on the right side of the screen at the exact time the needle reaches the green area in the speedometer. In the end, it will be all up to you when to shift up or down. Shifting early or late can affect your speed negatively, but hitting all the perfect shifts does not really guarantee a win. At any point in the race, you can also activate Nitrous for a short turbo boost, perfect for when you need an extra help to either catch up or widen the distance between you and your rival. What about curves, you ask? Well, there's none. All tracks are straight. Yes, it makes races super simple, but this also means that you don't have to worry about driving the perfect racing line. With that said, the gameplay is not for people looking for something like the mobile version of Forza or GT Sport. We all can channel our inner initial di Fujiwara Takumi. I'm sorry. 
It still has its own charm though as a simple casual game with races lasting only for a few seconds. It's basically a reflex game which can be really addicting to play. Excluding the limited time race modes, there are five types of game races that you can enter. Namely crew battles, regulation races, ladder races, daily battles, and live races. All of them I will briefly explain in this video. First up, crew battles. These are the races that are connected to the game's main story. In the game, you hunt out a car thief by going from one crew to another for information by battling them one member at a time, cause that's how they do it on the streets. Crew battles have a natural difficulty progression and each crew and crew member gets harder and harder to race. At the start of the story, you seek out new fangs. A tier 1 crew consisting of 4 members, Angel, Conduit, Sneak, and Keisha. You need to defeat each of them plus KJ, their boss, which you need to beat 3 times, totaling to 7 races. Aside from new fans, there are 4 more crews to beat, Gold Rushers, Azure Inferno, CSR Grand Finals, and Shax Industries. At this point of recording, I haven't been able to finish the story, so it will be a surprise for both you and I whether the story will end with the perpetrator being caught or not. Once you get stuck and cannot progress more on the main story due to a weak car, you need money in order to upgrade it. This is where regulation and ladder races enter. Regulation races are mini races that you can infinitely enter as long as you have fuel. They offer smaller rewards than the other race types, but it is the best way to grind for cash to do car upgrades especially when your car is still weak enough to progress on the crew battle. In ladder races, on the other hand, as the name suggests, you race your way to the top of a proverbial ladder to gradually earn big prizes. At the start of the game, as a newbie racer, you start out at tier 1 ladder and slowly climb up by winning races. Rewards also increase as you move up the ladder. There are 5 ladder tiers averaging a 30 races each, with the first tier having 24 races. The next set of races are special types of races that offer more than just rewards. Daily battles are races available every 4 hours, which lets you try out other cars, some even so rare and expensive that they're really really hard to obtain in the game. These races are good for the experience as well as an added avenue for cash. The last race mode I'm about to explain, Live Races, is one of the most exciting game modes in the game, as you can race against actual players by challenging each other, making it a realistic gauge on how well you can perform and how fine-tuned your car is. You can even bet in-game cash if you're feeling extra confident. As you can see, despite having 5 different race types, the gameplay remains the same all throughout these types. What varies them from one another is the experience as a whole and the amount of rewards given. You can collaborate with other players by joining a crew. This feature can be accessed by tapping the crew hangout node located on the map. The crew is the multiplayer aspect of the game where players can form a solid team comprising of real-life players to compete against other crews and participate in crew events. When you become a crew member, you can gain extra rewards such as crew bonus in solo crew battles and event races as well as other perks such as acquiring rare car parts. Each crew has their rank and crew members must collectively complete certain tasks to boost the entire rank of the crew. You can also challenge other players in one-on-one -on -one races by accessing live races. This PvP feature allows you to issue or receive challenges directly coming from other active players. To avoid having lopsided matches, you will not see the opposing player's car level upon accepting a challenge. Also, you can bet and raise the stakes to make matches more interesting. The chat feature is accessible by tapping the arrow icon on the main UI. There are two ways on how you can interact with other players in CSR2, either via crew chat or global chat. In crew chat, you can talk to your fellow crew members and see the latest updates on your crew, while the global chat allows you to voice out your sentiments or any comments in the global community of CSR2. 
you can also get some small amount of cash by linking your account and inviting other friends via Facebook. The trial events in CSR2 runs in a 14-day season cycle and each of them has their own schedules and time frames. These kinds of events, particularly cup events like the Prestige and Gold Cup, often dole out every increasing amount of rewards in the ladderized race formats. Usually, trial events requires you to use a specific car before you get to compete in it. Aside from the trial events, CSR2 also conducts limited time events. As of the moment, they are conducting the Hades Folly event, a special event based on the recently released action film Hobbs and Shaw, a spin-off from the Fast and the Furious film franchise. The event has 75 races that are structured in a ladder format, and participants must unlock or purchase cars that are featured in the movie to compete in races. The duration of this event runs from August 13 to August 21, 2019. Time to talk money, aka the mula. Instead of employing a dual currency model with a premium and soft currency similar to most mobile games, CSR2 has three premium currencies, gold, cash, and keys. Gold and cash go hand in hand in the game. You generally spend them when upgrading or buying a car. Upgrading or buying has an equivalent amount in both cash and gold. It is then up to you to use which currency you'd like to spend. You can spend a mix of them, however. Between the two, gold is rarer as it is usually rewarded by winning crew battles with crew bosses, while cash is always handed out when finishing races. It goes to say that purchasing gold costs a lot more than cash. Gold can cost you from 60 to almost 100 US dollars per 10,000 gold, well, 10,000 worth of cash can only cost you 1 to 2 US dollars. That is fine and all, as upgrading or buying cars using cash costs a whole lot more than using gold. Keys are a special currency used to open crates, the gacha boxes of the game. You know that was coming. Gachas are an essential part of games nowadays. Crates can contain car parts, cash, and even cars that are not available for purchase. And what else can make car racing players spend money but rare cars? Keys are also relatively harder to get as they're usually rewarded for maintaining winning streaks in live races. This just adds to the premiumness of keys and by extension, the crates. Among the currencies, keys are also the most expensive with a whopping 83 to 9,000 US dollars per 10,000 keys, depending on which type you buy. Technically, all three currencies can be acquired by religiously playing the game. Buying them using real money just takes the player to a better state easier and faster. By incorporating currencies to the main aspect of the game, which is the cars, it can be really enticing to do eye up. It still does not pass the line of being a pay to win game however, as everything can be grinded if you are diligent enough. Finally, as a mobile free to play game, CSR2 incorporates ads to monetize even the non-paying player demographic. Fuel can be refilled by watching ads and some time-gated upgrades can be bypassed by watching an ad. Tying ad watching and player progression makes it an essential action in the game. I mean, it's free energy, so why not? Personally, I like the game. It's not at the top of the list of my favorite games, but I am really interested in racing games ever since I was young. Although it is not a hardcore racing game, it is still nice to look at the cars. Cars that I can't afford. And its easy and casual gameplay makes it a breeze to go back to every now and then. I remember when I was a kid, I used to play Gran Turismo in PlayStation 1, and I was really amazed by how they brought real-life cars into the game. Now that I'm older, I kinda have that same feeling for CSR2, and it seems like that childlike wonder of mine has been reawakened. The fast-paced races are also a huge thumbs up for me and what makes this game head and shoulders above other racing games is the overall graphics of the cars. Like, you can customize the cars down to the last detail. We hate to wrap this up, but that's all the time that we've got for today. So, on that note, this has been Pao. And this has been Gwen. We hope that you've enjoyed this game review as much as we do and see you on our next video!